Welcome to this edition of 101 with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. I'm Lorna Vigili, and thank you for joining us. Mr. Leggett, welcome back. Thank you for having me. I'm glad thanks, to be back. Thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, recently, there was a walking tour at Wheaton. Wheaton apparently is positioned now for some uh, redevelopment. Let's start up with your vision for that sector of Montgomery County. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, County Council, and especially Council President Nancy Navarro, who has been a very strong champion for Wheaton. Uh, she recognizes that we need to make progress in Wheaton. She recognizes that we need to improve the job situation in Wheaton and to bring the sort of vitality that I think the community wants. And you do that in a number of ways. And, and the way I've approached this is to have a public-private par public partnership here. That is, to build from the private sector outward. But in order to do that, we need to make it attractive enough, inviting enough that we get the, the private partners to, to invest in. And I think that we now have a process in place whereby we will get that. Uh, we have some public investment in that we will have a new parking plan and headquarters. We may have some additional uh, components built into that as well. We'll see as we go forward. But I think now we have a clear understanding of what can be realized in Wheaton. We want to preserve the vitality there. We want to bring in additional jobs. We want to have mixed use there, residential components within Wheaton itself. And we want to do that without pushing aside many of the small businesses that are already there and that have been there for a long period of time and have suffered through uh, and waited for changes to happen. We, uh, Council President Navarro has also has a bill, she also has a bill that will in fact address part of that as well. So I think that we are all working together on this. We are looking forward to have a very, to have a very strong private partner to work with us. And I think that we have a vision and a plan now uh, that I think is workable, not only for Wheaton, but the entire region around there. We gotta take a short break. Uh, we're gonna stay with Wheaton when we come back. Stay tuned and we'll be right back with Montgomery County Executive, Ike Leggett. <music> There's a reason why area law enforcement are out enforcing pedestrian and traffic safety laws and preventing killer pedestrian crashes. Be alert. Be street smart. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls. 311. MC 311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket again. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> Now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics such as clamshells, deli containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. Woohoo! We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. Welcome back. 
Welcome back to 101 with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for watching. Uh, Mr. Leggett, we were talking about Wheaton and redevelopment before we went to the short break. Um, the county just issued an RFP mm -hmm. to look for the developer that will assist and collaborate with the county for this redevelopment of this sector of Montgomery County. And you did mention how different Wheaton is from other parts of the county that have been redeveloped, like Silver Spring, for instance. What is the biggest challenge in Wheaton as far as you are concerned for the redevelopment? I live there, I know what it is, but I mm -hmm. want you to tell me. Well, let's back up and look at what are the assets first. First of all, it's a very vibrant community as it exists, but there are some components that are missing. Uh, it sits right at the heart of a very good and busy metro station. Uh, it has a good metro and other transit routes that serve uh, the Wheaton area. And it has a mix of people that I think brings potentially vitality to the area that would be there for a long period of time. What it does not have, in my opinion, are a, uh, a number of strong uh, private job sectors that will help feed the restaurants, improve the nightlife, and enhance the development there in a way that goes with the residential. Uh, we have moved aggressively in the last year or so to improve the residential offerings that are in Wheaton, but we have not had the kind of job creation, that is, people who are there. But we don't only want people who are there from nine to five, we want them beyond that period of time and there on weekends as well. So it has a great deal of commercialization in Wheaton already. It has a very large mall and a lot of very small but fine uh, uh, local businesses that are there. We need to have some larger businesses, larger employers that would go with the mix that we already have there. Um, talking about that, for instance, Silver Spring, there was, of course, uh, Discovery Communications that was a big employer in mm -hmm. that region. Um, what is out there for Wheaton as far as something similar to that? Well, you don't necessarily find that there's a discovery right around the corner. No. Uh, we want just simple, long-term, stable employers. But keep in mind, people assume that Silver Spring happened overnight. I was there part of the ongoing struggle for Silver Spring for a long period of time. And many people had really given up on Silver Spring and thought that we should just simply abandon it. I, I was part of the county council and a former county executive and others. Uh, we pushed to make certain that we had something that was acceptable. We went through four or five different iterations of what Silver Spring would be like. We had one huge press conference with the community, developers, and everyone else at the table going forth for a plan that two months later that plan was pulled. Uh, so there was a great deal of, of false steps in Silver Spring before we ultimately achieved the kind of success that we have today. And so we can avoid some of that. One of the things that I hope that we would avoid, that many of the small businesses in Silver Spring did not receive their just due because they had worked there, been there for a long period of time. And when much of the major development occurred, uh, to some degree, they were not part of that. And we need to make certain that we don't replicate that in Wheaton. We need to make sure that that, that does not happen. And the bill that Council President Navarro has put forward, uh, I think, helps to assist that those kinds of things would not happen. But that was a big step. Uh, you had an active community in Silver Spring. You had some public and private businesses that already existed. They simply needed to go to a bigger scale. And we went through several iterations of what that will look like before we ultimately got a change in Discovery Place, before we got uh, a change in City Place, and before we got uh, the Discovery Communication uh, located there and some of the other businesses that are there now. Affordable housing, approximately, what, 900 units to be built in the next couple of years. Uh, Wheaton's a little different. The residents from that area uh, cannot afford Rockville, cannot afford downtown Silver Spring. What is the county going to do to ascertain that there will be affordable housing in all this mixed-use development? Right. Well, first of all, we have a very strong affordable housing law that provides a certain level of 12.5 percent of all units of construction of housing in the county over a certain number now will be built in any event. But I think that what we do in terms of the partnership is that we provide some incentives that will go over and above that. And we assist in this development project that would allow us to have at least some leverage with developers to say, yes, you're required to build this number, but in exchange for amenities, in exchange for other things that may happen there, 
uh, we can improve those numbers. And so that's part of the negotiation discussion that we will have. But we need to do better than the 12.5 percent, and I think that we will do that and provide at least a greater option for affordable housing in Wheaton. Uh, the text of Wheaton, it, was, uh, it recently happened. Um, I went, I actually went, and uh, very upgraded compared to uh, last year. It was a much better event, so congratulations for that. And now that brings us to Silver Spring. Mm -hmm. Recently, the Silver Spring Arts and Entertainment District received the State of Maryland Arts and Entertainment District Outstanding Achievement Award. How, um, well, congratulations for that. Thank you. They're working really hard in downtown Silver Spring to bring us folks to, to, to be part of that economy. Um, I'm a resident of Wheaton, and truth is, I don't spend my dollars in, in Wheaton. I go to other parts of the county, and that is the scenario for most of us. What are we going to bring into Wheaton that it's similar to this so that we can have some fun there? Well, first of all, we need to make certain that we have uh, the kinds of entities that attract the community and want to come there, uh, that it's safe, that it's convenient, transportation, uh, that there are options in terms of uh, uh, the kind of mix of things that you would have to offer there. This is why having the office buildings there assist in that power transition of those things that occur. Because oftentimes you have people who work there, stay there, and people who, who work there may live nearby. People who work there may visit the restaurants, and those restaurants are upgraded. The entertainment is upgraded. So it's all come as a result of having businesses that are there. Once you have the businesses that are there, you have the kinds of things now and we that all you simply need to build on. They simply need to have steady employers who are there who feed into the local economy. And once you do that, you build that uh, sort of art and entertainment component that will give you the greater options for which you may come to like some of the options that are there. Uh, but you first need to get people there uh, who are willing to spend dollars and who work there and are willing to go to restaurants and everything else that would help make that possible. Uh, talking about the local economy, the AT&T National is coming back. To, it's a, a, taking place at Congressional this year once again. Uh, how does that translate into dollars for Montgomery County? Tiger Woods. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now seriously, uh, yeah. we've had a successful tournament, uh, but there is success and there's real success. Tiger Woods is real success. And having his name attached to this tournament and being an intricate part of it, I think translates into huge uh, fan reaction, uh, participation by large numbers of people, that visit the hotels, that stay there, that go to the restaurants, uh, and to make this um, uh, one of the highlights of uh, entertainment in the entire region for a long period of time. Uh, but it starts with having a good tournament, a venue, Congressional Country Club is an excellent venue. Uh, we've had a number of tournaments here in the county, and I think that we have a team here that has been assembled over the years through Tom Street, the police department, fire rescue, everyone else, uh, transportation, that we know how to manage this very well and can provide the assistance support that the tournament needs in order to be successful. Uh, but uh, the big draw in this is really Tiger Woods, and, and that's the person I think really jump starts this entire process. Remember the Duress show last year? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. We'll talk about pedestrian safety sure. when we return. <laughs> This summer, dig up some fun. Dig into reading. Who knows what you'll find? Explore with books and make the light shine. If you dig deep and are very clever, you'll find adventure and buried treasure. Watch the past unfold as stories are told. When you discover books, your imagination explodes. There's an amazing world right under your feet. Uncover the secret to make your summer complete. Visit your library and dig into reading. You can never know which pool safety step will save a life. Until it does. No matter how safe you feel, adding multiple safety steps can mean the difference between a close call and a call to 911. Simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit poolsafely.gov.
traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. If it wasn't for his doctor, he wouldn't be here. If it weren't for Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, he wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the phone call, we wouldn't have been there. If I didn't call, I don't know where we would be. Montgomery County emergency responders are there when you need help at no cost to you. In an emergency, don't ever hesitate to call 911. If you live in Montgomery County, you will never get a bill or pay a dime. So if you have an emergency, call us. We're, We're there, there for, for you. you. Welcome back to 101 with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett and let's transition now into pedestrian safety. The efforts have been there with education, enforcement and engineering for the last five years and the numbers have really come down but lately it's been uh, extremely bad in the county. Not so much the fault of pedestrians but this time 60% or so of the incidents, the drivers in the county. Well. Keep in mind what we said all along, that providing the enforcement, providing the education, uh, providing uh, the uh, engineering, it was not a one-shot deal, that you must continue this on an ongoing basis. Therefore, you may have some t times in this whereby the numbers are very good for us, and they have been, uh, but you may also have some times whereby they are not. And right now, those numbers have suffered, especially in terms of, of, of deaths in the county. The formula is still there. We simply need to enhance it and to ensure that we maintain the momentum that we've started, that you simply cannot go out and educate someone for a year and then back away from that, or enforce for a short period of time and back away from that. You must continue to explore engineering options to ensure that what you do has a lasting impact. Because what happens, you have newer people coming in. Uh, you have people who may not have seen the messages, understand the, the pro progress that we've made in the county, are not as alert as they should be. And so you must continue to reinforce that. So that's one. And we need to increase that to ensure that more people get the message. But you don't need to go back to reinvent the will. You simply need to improve on the will that we already have. And I think that will ultimately push those numbers back down. Um, let's transition into elder abuse and elder abuse awareness day. The county just held at the uh, Civic Center in Silver Spring an event sort of to inform the community um, elder abuse and resources, information as to uh, what to do with these particular cases of elder abuse. What is the reality in Montgomery County when it comes to elder abuse or seniors, which is, we all know it's a growing population. Well, first of all, as you mentioned, it is a growing population in Montgomery County. And you have some very well-informed seniors that are in Montgomery County. Uh, but uh, there are so many people out there today who are coming up with schemes on top of schemes, and uh, you figure out how to avoid one level of abuse or scheme, uh, there's another one right around the corner. And so you need to make sure that people are constantly aware of all of the schemes and games that are being played on one level, and also how people can be so insensitive. Oftentimes people assume that abuse comes as a result of some uh, direct, intentional, outside of the family force. That happens. But a large amount of the abuse comes from family members, people who are in the care uh, of those who may ultimately abuse them. And so it's least expected. Your guards oftentimes that are down, uh, people don't report it because they are fearful of reporting a family member. And so you need to be very aware of your surroundings, uh, report abuse, uh, ensure that even family members are treating people with dignity and respect. Uh, 
uh, and to make certain that we take advantage of the resources that we have, for example, in the county, the police, the Health and Human Services Department, uh, to make certain we use the state's attorney's office when need be to investigate certain areas, uh, and to make sure that all of those things are working together to ensure that we best inform people, that we check upon them periodically, that we don't take things for granted as it relates to family members because large numbers of these abuse cases comes as a result of family members or people that are in the care of others. So we need to keep the public clearly aware of the challenges and to better educate them. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, the small businesses in the county. 33,000 of them headquartered here in Montgomery County. And recently, you and uh, Director Steve Silverman from DD honor eight companies that do business. This is something it's done almost every year to recognize small businesses that uh, are here in Montgomery County. Uh, talk about that, and then as a follow-up question, um, what is the county doing to be more proactive so that small businesses do more business with county government? Well, first of all, we do have a large number, 33,000 small businesses are in Montgomery County. And people are not aware that it's through the small businesses that are backbone of the employees that currently exist in the county. Uh, people know of the very large corporations that are here. And on a singular basis, in terms of one entity, uh, they provide sort of a larger plurality of employees, and if you look at it that way. But the overall majority of employees, by and large, comes as a result of small business that we have here. It is important that we continue to work with them to make sure that they understand that we want to retain them, uh, that the government is here to assist and support them, uh, that we provide assistance and support across the board on a variety of things that they need, uh, that we want to attract additional business that are here, and that we want to work with them, They're not put up barriers for which uh, they cannot be productive. Because if they're not productive, uh, that they are not creating the jobs, they're not creating the tax base that we want. Their success is our success. In recognizing some of these businesses, it's just remarkable stories of what some of these small businesses have done and how successful they are. And so we want to show and demonstrate to them that this county is a partner with them, that we want to be supportive of them, and that we're going to do everything within our power to make sure that they are successful. More possibilities of big contracts from procurement unbundled? Yeah, we've done a lot of that. We need to do more of it. We continue to try to examine ways in which we can make it much more attractive for small businesses. And uh, we never get this right, uh, perfect. Uh, and we continue to engage with the small businesses to see where they can be helpful, to identify areas where we can be much more supportive of them. And as we did some years ago, unbundled a number of those contracts, we now have a great deal of success so far. Uh, one of the other areas was the inability for many of the small businesses to get the kinds of loans and the capital they need. We've changed that by coming up with a program now by, whereby we provide banks monies through the county, county, uh, uh, county uh, finances that help them to loan monies out to small businesses. That has been very, very successful over the past year. Thank you, Mr. Leggett, for right. uh, sharing um, your time with us today. It is always a pleasure. And uh, for you watching, any information regarding the county, do visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for watching. It's always nice to come home, but these days, many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making Home Affordable is a free program from the U.S. government that has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these, and we want to help you. I'm home. I'm home. And I love it. I'm home. I'm home. Find out now what your options are. Go to makinghomeaffordable.gov or call 1-888-995-HOPE. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home, I'm home, where I belong.
Montgomery County residents with computers, smartphones, and other electronic devices now have convenient access to a growing variety of information. Visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov open to discover how Montgomery County government is more transparent, accessible, and efficient than ever. Access Montgomery links digital services related to accountability, accessibility, and transparency, including MC311 and County Stat performance tracking, you can link to internal audits, spending disclosures, contracts, open solicitations, budgets, and free Wi-Fi locations in the county. Data Montgomery offers such information as access to employee salaries, food safety inspections, cable complaints, and residential and commercial building permits. Engage Montgomery is the new social media platform that encourages public participation on key issues and offers a place where people can share ideas on ways to improve the community. Mobile Montgomery details the county's mobile sites like MC311 and Transportation Storm Operations, Library Book Mine, Crime Reports, and Ride on Real Time. The new open government efforts are expected to move Montgomery County towards even greater service improvements and efficiencies. We hope you'll take a look and let us know what you think by calling 240-777-6507 or emailing publicinformation at montgomerycountymd.gov.